Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India approves $2 billion incentive plan for green hydrogen industry. Pakistan unveils early to bed, early to rise policy to conserve energy. And Taliban tells Pakistan to avoid baseless talks after minister warns of strike in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. India's Union Cabinet on Wednesday approved an incentive plan of 2.11 billion US dollars to promote green hydrogen in a bid to cut emissions and become a major exporter in the field. The move is targeted to help the country, which one of the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitters, achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2070. India has approved an incentive plan of 2.11 billion US dollars to promote green hydrogen in a bid to cut emissions and become a major exporter in the field. The country's information minister, Anurag Thakur, said on Wednesday, the move is targeted to help India, one of the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitters, achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2070. The incentive aims to make green hydrogen affordable and bring down its cost over the next five years, Anurag Thakur told reporters, adding that the government expects investments totaling $96.65 billion in the green hydrogen sector. जहां एक और 50 लाख 50 लाख टन एनुअल प्रोडक्शन हमारा ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन का होगा वहीं पर 50 मिलियन मीट्रिक टन कार्बन एमिशंस एनुअली कम होंगे और यही नहीं हमारा जो इंपोर्ट फॉसिल फ्यूल्स का है वो भी एक लाख करोड़ की सेविंग उस पे होगी Hydrogen made by splitting water with an electrical process called electrolysis can be used as a fuel. If the devices that do that electrolyzers are powered by renewable energy, the product is called green hydrogen. The current cost of producing green hydrogen in India is 300 rupees to 400 rupees per kg, according to industry sources. The United States and the European Union have already approved incentives worth billions of dollars for green hydrogen projects. In view of the increased movement of terrorists in dark and dense fog, a night curfew has been imposed along the India-Pakistan international border in Jammu and Kashmir. Applicable from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., the order will remain in effect for the next two months. In view of the increased movement by terrorists in dark and dense fog, a night curfew has been imposed along the international border of India and Pakistan by authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The development comes after the recent attacks in Rajouri and Siddhara in Jammu region. The order issued by the District Commissioner of Samba says the night curfew will be applicable from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. within one kilometer radius of the border. It will continue for next two months and all the villagers have been informed about the same, the district official said. National Mopondas ka din a raha hai, 26 janvi ka uske madhe nazar jo hai, is jo faisle ko liya gaya hai, aur hum ek decision aur ek order mila hai, jiske anusar jo ek kilometer ke area mein jo hai, no public movement aur no local movement ke ko humne maintain karna hai, aur ye aas se shuru hai, jo no 6 baje se leke subha, नौ बजे से लेके सुबह छः बजे तक जो है अर्ली ना मॉर्निंग वो रहेगा और पब्लिक से ये अपील है कि वो अनावश्यक जो है मन ना करें वो हमारे सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस डिप्लॉयड हैं Samba is considered a sensitive zone which has witnessed infiltrations by terrorists from international borders in the past in winters due to snowfall in hilly areas and dense fog in the plains the conditions become helpful for terrorist movements. India has long accused Pakistan aids terrorists to infiltrate and mount attacks on Indian soil, but Islamabad denies the charge. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistan government on Tuesday announced early closure of market and wedding halls among other measures as part of the new energy conservation plan. Pakistan Defence Minister Khwaja Asif has claimed these measures will help the cash-strapped country to save 273 billion. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif led government on Tuesday announced early closure of markets and malls among other measures in a new energy conservation plan for Pakistan. As per the new directives, markets should close by 8:30 p.m. and wedding halls by 10 p.m. Addressing the press, Pakistan's Defence Minister Khwaja Asif said, "The cabinet approved measures to shut markets aimed to save the cash-strapped country about 273 billion US dollars." He added, "The decision was made after holding talks with trader bodies. While the trader bodies had pushed for differing times, government decided for an early closure," he said. However, Pakistan's trader body has alleged they were only asked suggestions and no consultation was held by the government. They have refused compliance, saying their businesses would be ruined and the shops were open in the capital in Islamabad till 10:30 p.m. Ajar Hazrat se jo hai guftugu hui, wo sare unhone mehrbani ki ek badi delegation sare Pakistan se yahan pe aayi Prime Minister Secretariat mein unse mulaqat hui. To unme बाज ने नौ कहा बाज ने साढ़े आठ कहा बाज ने साढ़े नौ कहा बहरहाल हमने आठ से इसको साढ़े आठ कर दिया इस पॉलिसी से इस शादी हाल रेस्टोरेंट्स और मार्केटों के ये अगर टाइम ऑब्जर्व हो तो बासठ अरब रुपए की बचत होगी मोस्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज प्रोड्यूस यूजिंग इम्पोर्टेड फॉसिल फ्यूल्स इंक्लूडिंग लिक्विफाइड नेचुरल गैस प्राइसिस ऑफ विच हैव स्काई रॉकेटेड ओवर रिसेंट मंथ्स The government has tried to stabilize the economy by containing imports and decades high inflation. A fast depreciating currency has made imports more expensive, while consumer prices saw a 25% year on year rise in the first half of the current fiscal year. Moving on, Gilgit Baltistan is home to some of the most captivating natural sceneries on earth. which have the potential of making it a tourist hotspot however the locals say the sad reality is that the number of tourists flocking to the region has declined substantially due to the poor road infrastructure and lack of accommodation but pakistan government is least bothered a report Locals in Gilgit Baltistan have blamed the negligence of Pakistani government to develop infrastructure including roads and medical facilities is keeping tourists away despite snowfall which is a major attraction residents claimed hotels have been shut for the past 2 years due to which tourists have to face various problems and the accommodations built by the tourism department are completely deserted and give the impression of bleak houses They said the lack of road accessibility, mobile network and transport facilities serve as major hindrances for tourists as well as for them. The road ki jo halat hai wo kuch behtar na hone ki wajah se yahan aane wale sayah pareshan hai to dusri janib agar main PTDC ke jo hotel hai unki ab baat kar lo to PTDC ke jo hotel hai wo sabka jo hukumat thi us uske daur mein wo band ho chuke hain taqreeban 2 saalon se jo mulazim hai wo bhi berozgar hai aur wo hotelon ki bandish ki wajah se jo या इस इलाके की तरफ आ रहे हैं इनको भी मुश्किल का सामना है मेरे जो टूरिज्म का जो डिपार्टमेंट है उनसे मुतालबा होगा कि वो फौरी तौर पर ये जो होटल हैं इनको खोल दें ताकि यहाँ आने वाले सयाहों को रिहाइश के हवाले से जो मसाइल है वो कम हो सके गिलगित बल्तिसान इज होम टू सम ऑफ द मोस्ट कैप्टिवेटिंग नेचुरल सीनरीज ऑन अर्थ विच हैव द पोटेंशियल ऑफ मेकिंग इट अ टूरिस्ट हॉट स्पॉट However, local blame Islamabad's indifferent attitude towards the region has been affecting all sections of the society. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban has asked Pakistan to avoid baseless talks and provocative ideas a day after Pakistan's National Security Committee in an apparent indication towards the government in Kabul said that no country will be allowed to provide sanctuaries and facilitation to terrorists. The statement by Pakistan came in the wake of a rise in attacks by the Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan militant group. 
The Taliban on Tuesday asked Pakistan to avoid baseless talks and provocative ideas a day after Pakistan's National Security Committee in an apparent indication towards the interim government in Kabul said no country will be allowed to provide sanctuaries and facilitation to terrorists. The statement by Pakistan came in the wake of a rise in attacks by the Tehreek e Taliban Pakistan TTP militant group which is not directly associated but pledges allegiance to Afghan Taliban. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid in a statement said that the Islamic Emirate wants peaceful relations with all its neighboring countries including Pakistan and believes in all the ways that can lead to achieving this goal and it is regrettable that Pakistani officials are making false statements about Afghanistan Earlier this week Pakistan's interior minister Rana Sanaullah also said that his country will target TTP hideouts inside Afghanistan The fresh attacks come after TTP's withdrawal from a ceasefire with Pakistan government. Meanwhile, the US State Department spokesperson Ned Price in a press briefing said that Pakistan has a right to defend itself from terrorism. Price also called on the Taliban to uphold the very commitment they have made to see that Afghan soil is never again used as a launch pad for international terrorist attacks. In news from Bangladesh, The 27th edition of the Dhaka International Trade Fair, the largest annual commercial and trade event in Bangladesh, is witnessing a footfall of hundreds of visitors every day. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina inaugurated the month-long trade fair on Sunday. It features more than 350 local and foreign stalls and pavilions compared to 225 last year. Entrepreneurs from 10 countries including local traders have put on show a variety of items including textiles, carpets, cosmetics, electronics, jute and leather products among others. The annual event plays an important role in local and foreign trade. The spot export orders of 200 crore Bangladeshi taka were made in the last edition of the fair. Four gay couples have asked India Supreme Court to recognize same-sex marriages, setting the stage for a legal face-off with the government, which has in the past refused to legalize such marriages. Litigants have said they are denied rights, including those linked to medical consent, pensions, and adoption. The apex court has given the government until Friday to submit its responses. A report. Uday Raj Anand, a Delhi-based businessman and his partner Parth Mehrotra, the chief editor of a digital book publishing house Jagannot Books, have been together for 17 years and have since started a family with two children. They are among four gay couples who have asked India Supreme Court to recognize same-sex marriages, setting the stage for a legal face-off with Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government, which has in the past refused to legalize such marriages. It is a natural next step for us to want to get married as marriage is an institution that pervades every aspect of living Mehrotra said um it's the natural next step i'm just like you i'm just like anybody out there and it's a natural next step for us to want to get married um and so our plea to the court is give us that right to get married one of us isn't the legal father of our children we have two children together uh you know we put them to bed every night and we sing to them and we read to them uh and one of us is daddy and one of us one of us is papa but on paper one of us doesn't have any relationship with these children um so what happens if uh he were to pass away the children would have no rights to his estate in a historic verdict in 2018 india's top court decriminalized homosexuality by scrapping a colonial era ban on gay sex despite the 2018 ruling members of india's lesbian gay bisexual and transgender lgbt community complain about a lack of acceptance and discrimination against gay people in indian society last month a federal lawmaker from modi's ruling party sushil modi said in the parliament that same sex marriage would cause complete havoc with the delicate balance of personal laws in the country two judges cannot decide on such social issues he said as he appealed lawmakers to oppose legal recognition of marriage between same sex couples the supreme court has given the government until friday to submit its responses
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.